the ricochet effect, ricochet effect, like ricochet. Having conversation with no moderation, love to the communities, the ricochet effect. Having conversation with no moderation, love to the communities, the ricochet effect. Having conversation with no moderation. Hi, this is Renee Cobb, and I'm Dr. Abini El Amin, and we are with the Ricochet Effect. The WUKY 2024 Women of Distinction kicks off in the month of March for Women's History Month. We have 13 nominees, four committee members from staff in the WUKY CAB, and WUKY Newsroom Engagement. All women will be recognized on WUKY news programming. However, four women are selected to be highlighted in each week of March and at a culminating program to be held at WUKY Studios on March 28, 2024 at 6 p.m. Angela C. Evans made history in 2022 when she was sworn in as the first African-American county attorney in Kentucky. A native of Lexington, Evans is the Fayette County Attorney. With a heart for service and justice, Angela works to ensure political candidates, businesses, and individuals abide by the same rules and are treated fairly by the Commonwealth of Kentucky. With more than two decades of service as a lawyer and public official, Angela provides a deep and proven understanding of policy and the legislative process to her role as County Attorney. She previously served as the 6th District Council Member on the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government Council for three elected terms. Elected in 2015, Angela became only the second woman of color to serve on the council. A voice of reason, always ready to ask difficult questions and addressing challenging issues, Angela garnered national attention in 2018 while addressing the removal of the Confederate statues from downtown. Her effective and eloquent remarks to urge her fellow council members to relocate the statues led to an invitation to appear on MSNBC Live with Holly Jackson to discuss how Lexington navigated a divisive topic with civility. Greetings, everyone. We are here with the Ricochet Effect. I'm Dr. Abini El Amin in the studio with... And I'm Renee Collins-Cobb. And we could not be more excited this afternoon to introduce to the world a woman of <laughs> distinction for WUKY in partnership with the Project Ricochet and also Kajan. So we're very happy to have Angela C. Evans, who made history in 2022 when she was sworn in as the first African-American county attorney in Kentucky. Everyone, put your hands <laughs> together because we have an amazing woman of distinction here with us today. So, Angela, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's a true honor. Uh, a little bit about myself. I, I was born and raised in, in Lexington. Um, I graduated from Tates Creek High School, was one of those kids who said, Kentucky's nice, but it's not for me. Let's move away. I did my undergrad at a historically black uh, university. I went to Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta. And um, then decided I, I majored in social work there and realized I could not really save the world. Um, so I decided to narrow it down a little bit and go to law school and thought perhaps I would work in the healthcare system, you know, improving our health care uh, system coverage, all of that insurance stuff that uh, was a real eye opener for me in my internship uh, during my, my undergrad so went to the University of Tennessee. So and it was as great of an experience as law school can be. It was a really good experience there. And by that time, decided I wanted to work in criminal law and be a public defender. Again, going back to my social work roots and wanting to help people. And that's always been the trajectory of my career, just wanting to help. That is um, just in my core. So did that, was a public defender for about five years, and then realized I need to do a little bit more in this whole legal field. And that just took me on the trajectory of, of government, which I, I've loved. You know, it's been, been wild and crazy, and I never expected to take the twists and turns of elected office, but um, here I am. So 
it's been a wild ride. And that, that's kind of a <laughs> the gist of it. Well, you're doing an amazing job because we've gotten such incredible feedback at WKY at the fact that you are one of our selected women of distinction. Um, and people are just like, oh, my God, I'm so excited that attorney Evans has just risen to the top. But that's what creme de la creme does, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I'm learning. To- yes, I, I've worked hard. Yes. I'm sure just like a lot of the women of distinction that we are honoring in International Women's History Month mm-hmm. have experienced. Um, can you tell us about a significant challenge that you have faced in your career along the way of this trajectory that you describe? And maybe give us an example of how you overcame it. Great question. Uh, I think really for me, it's been any big move. You know, I'm like a lot of us, it's normal to kind of get in a rut and or just, you know, get used to what you're doing and just say, hey, I'll be here and it's it's fine. But I've always had that need for a change of something. You know, I, I don't want things to be routine. I've I've really enjoyed each job that I've had, but always wanted something more, something different. Um, I think the biggest challenges I've had is really deciding to run for office. And that's what I tell anyone who decides to run. Like that truly is the leap. That's the hardest decision is to actually say, I'm going to do it. Putting yourself out there because then you become very vulnerable and exposed. You have to tell people why you're qualified. You have to start talking about yourself in a way that you probably haven't talked about yourself before. You have to ask people for money. Like all of this stuff that... um, You really have to find the confidence within yourself and the go-getter, you know, just that, that push forward to say, this is, I have put myself out there and now everyone knows and I'm going to have to, to do come what may, because it's not a guarantee either. So I think that's thinking like the last 10 years. Yeah, it's truly been the decision to run for these different offices because I'm not a person that makes decisions easily. <laughs> so just thinking about it. And I've learned throughout the years that making the decision truly is the hardest part. And that's where probably 70% of your anxiety comes from. So making the decision and then just going forward with that, whatever the decision is. That was definitely the gem, mm-hmm. is to make the decision to begin with. And so what inspired you to pursue your current career path or advocacy work? So I'll be specific with the county attorney position. Um, (laughs) What led me to that? Well, that's a long story, (laughs) but I'll I'll try to sum it up. You know, uh, let's go back to uh, COVID. So 2020, I decided to leave city council. And go get my master's at Princeton University, which was a whole nother decision to just do and just make that leap. Leaving council, that's not something I anticipated doing. I signed up to run again. Um, and it was sad for me to do that, but I knew I wanted to do uh, take this trajectory. So um, I wasn't sure what was going to happen after that. But it was COVID. So after a year of school people aren't hiring, you know, it's still this, this limbo. And I'm like, well, I'm 45 years old. I don't know how it was at the time. Still in this limbo of, well, what do I do? And, you know, talking to my friends and I, I, I have a, a life coach, but really taking the time to think about what I, what I really wanted to do next, instead of just feeling the angst and having to feel like I need to apply for jobs and apply for any, any job to really sit back and think about what I wanted to do next. What did I go to Princeton for? What did I want to learn? What do I still want to learn? What do I really want to pursue with my career? Which was um, criminal justice reform. You know, that was something that really came to the forefront for me. And when you talk to people, you talk to your friends, people who know you, people who have ambition for you, um, they, they start thinking about different things. And someone brought the idea of, running for county attorney to me. That's not something I was necessarily thinking about running for another office, any office. And so (laughs) being the person that I am and what I'd shared with them and 
always just wanting to serve the public, it just seemed like the right thing to do for me. And it was an office that I knew in several different aspects, knew about. And it just seemed like, as I tell people, my resume made sense when I started looking at, at this position as county attorney. So that's how, how it happened. And <laughs> hopefully so far, so good. Well, that's been a wonderful um, journey of your career. Let me kind of ask, and especially since you've identified yourself as someone that works with a life coach, which, by the way, I will need that number too, yeah. Dr. Elmi. <laughs> She's amazing. How do you define success and how do you strive to achieve it in your endeavors? Yeah, I've actually talked to her about this. <laughs> um, and for me, truly, it, I will say whether personally or professionally, success truly for me is making someone else's life better or helping them see their own potential, mm-hmm. helping them grow. Um, you know, that's... I'm going to try not to get teary-eyed about that, but that truly is something that, you know, all I want to do is be able to help people improve their life, whether it's the circumstance that they're in or, you know, for them to help to see their own um, potential. You know, it really is. that That's what it's about, right? <laughs> that's what about you're, you're about to make me get teary-eyed. Yeah, I mean, it's not the first time. Yeah, you, you know, and the thing is, is that you put so much of yourself yes. out there. And all of our women of distinction do, and all of the women on the committee for the women of distinction, we put so much out there because it's love. And uh, we put so much of ourselves out there. And I am just honored that, that, that you would share tears of inspiration and joy with us in this forum. And you are in a truly safe space, yeah. a loving space, a supportive space, because we truly are honored by the work that you do and the impact that you make in the community. Can you share a memorable achievement or project that you're particularly proud of? Oh, yeah, that's going to be my most recent project. My, my policy side just geeks out. So I campaigned on being transparent. Again, has been in government most of my my career I know that there are good people doing good work and you know we've lost trust in government whether it's the court system or just government as a whole but there are so many good people doing good work and we need to remind the public of what we're doing and that specifically in Kentucky we are doing it well and in Fayette County we're doing it well so I I campaigned on being more transparent about what we do in the county attorney's office, um, you know, we collect money, we collect revenue, and you know what we're doing with it. So, again, once again, to build that trust that so many people have lost for various reasons in the system. So, just I think it might be a week old now, <laughs> maybe two weeks old, that we were able to release our first annual report ever for the office, and I think it might be the first annual report for the state for any county attorney office, but to really want to educate people on what we do and how we're doing it and showing, you know, things that might be of interest that I think might be of interest to people. But the annual report is, it is my baby. (laughs) It was something that uh, I wanted to do and it's a campaign promise, you know, um, achieved. So I'm so excited about that and just happy to continue that and we'll we'll tweak it as it goes but uh that is the project that I'm I'm the most proud of thus far and so there's so many great things that I know that you're bringing to the the office but also uh just wow I mean like a passion project in terms of the impact that 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 it yeah. is to make that it will make and then also i need to speak to the fact i mean you, you are the first of and it, it really looks like that you're going to be the first of many 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 things in this office so we applaud you for that so the next question to kind of ask that again that we've explored with a variety of women of distinction and what's mm-hmm. so wonderful is hearing all these different responses but also knowing that they're similar in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. So as a woman in your field, what do you see as the most pressing issues or barriers for women's advancement and how do you work to address those? 
Well, I would say, you know, it's still, the legal field is still male dominated and in perhaps not necessarily in numbers or that the numbers are, are leveling off, um, but the women in power and, you know, as uh, firm managers or in any form of leadership are still pretty low. Um, so we need women and I will put myself in this, you know, it, even though I still feel like I need so much mentorship, you know, and, and I'm still learning. <laughs> um, you know, I, I want to be mindful and I think other women and men actually need to be mindful about um, identifying women who might have that potential to lead and um, really encourage because that that's something that and that's true for even running for offices that um, I think it's seven times a woman has to be addressed, not even asked to run seven times, but just throw the nugget out there. You should run for office seven times before she considers even thinking about it. Whereas you know, men are like, oh, I, I can do whatever. Yeah, sure. I have no qualifications or I meet the bare minimum. So we still need that even in the legal field where, you know, we think they're, you know, type A, they're dominating personalities for women kind of thing. But even in the legal field, we still um, need to encourage women to be in more leadership positions. Although I will say Bay County's got a pretty female dominated judicial bench right now. So I think we're doing good on on that level. But um, but again, we still need women in the pipeline in law firms, in government, in leadership, in that role as well. So so I'd, I still think there's there's still some work to be done. You want other people to quote your name when you're not in the room. You mm-hmm. want other mm-hmm. women to talk about your great works. Mm-hmm. And we need that so that we can evolve and to be promoted, to be elevated, right. and to truly reach our potential. I mean, I know that you and I, Renee, we talk about this all the time. So, I mean, like, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think it really transitions next to the uh, next question that we have about mentoring because Attorney Evans did bring up how important that is to you. So as I ask about um, your role in mentoring others, let me ask you, who's been significant in mentoring you along the path? There's like a long line of people behind me who have created what you see now and who are still helping me. Um, grow and learn, but you know, I'll I'll say that you know, I always have to start with my mom, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? um, so I would start with that, I, and because she was a trailblazer or, or is a trailblazer, she's still still with us um, in her own right. Uh, she was the first female African American um, president for the Fayette County Education Association. So either the first African American or the, or the youngest, I don't know. I just remember at some point I saw an article with my mom, you know, the mm-hmm. newspaper article. With my mom's there, and she's like thirty six years old, and there's this this thing. So she's always been in leadership. Um, so she's always kind of been that that role model. I've I've seen her uh, leading meetings, whether it's in you know the education association or in her sorority, my sorority now, because our sorority. My sorority. Um, <laughs> So, and then, you know, those women, you know, I I go back to my first role models, you know, seeing black women working together in the sorority, having those meetings, getting things done, you know, putting on, you know, debutante balls or other projects, you know, and just working together, maybe bickering about it, but (laughs) at the end of the day, um, getting things done. Um, And, you know, I've, I've got a godmother who's, you know, been right there, you know, with her. Um, so I'll say between the the Lexington chapter of Delta Sigma Theta and the Fayette County Education Association, I was just raised by and saw fabulous women taking on leadership positions. And so that's, that's where it started. Um, along the way politically, I mean, there have been so many people, men and women, um, and I'm afraid if I start naming names, I'll forget or someone might feel left out. But and I'll say talking about men encouraging, there was 
one, well, one male um, hunted me down, like when he knew <laughs> that a city council position was opening in my district. And he was like, oh, well, you said you want to run for office. Your council member's not running again. You need to think about this. So <laughs> that kind of encouragement. And then also someone else who was very um, well established in politics who we were just in an event one day, you know, a fair or something of some sort. And he just saw me interacting with people. And he, he didn't have to say this. But he's like, you really should think about running for office. Like, just your interaction with people. You seem to know a lot of people. You're likable. Like all this stuff that he did not have to say. But for him who had such um, knowledge about you know, whatever, poli- everything about politics and, and campaigning and working with people, that was something that's always stuck with me. And I've thanked him a couple of times over for that because he didn't have to say it. And people need that encouragement. So, so yeah, it's things like that, but a long, such a long line of people. I went through Emerge Kentucky, which is a training program that uh, trains Democratic women to run for office. I mean, a whole slew of everyone, <laughs> board, board of directors, the uh, directors themselves, uh, the founder, you know, Jennifer Moore for bringing it to Kentucky. There there have been so many people that have been encouragers and mentors. Um, you know, Sandy Overly, who was a candidate for lieutenant governor and um, was in the House of Representatives and leadership here in Kentucky. Um huge mentor and and still is so it, it's again I'm going to start getting into naming people so I don't want to <laughs> but it is it's been a, a long list of people um but just like I said starting from my mom on up and it's been you know a combination of people women men black white it it's old young it's been a combination I've heard a quote that says you know, it's not the big trees that you cut down, but it's the small seeds you plant along the way. Exactly. And I really see that in your story with all of these seeds. And, you know, you really talked about the newspaper, too. And I just want to go back in time because that used to be a huge deal if somebody yeah. was in the newspaper, yeah. right? And we have so many outlets now where it happens all of the time. But how special that must have been to have that memory of seeing your mother in a newspaper, yeah, and well, I say a memory, but also probably may have really raised the bar. This is the standard we're working with. <laughs> this is who we are now. <laughs> Not that she ever said anything about it, right. but um, but but yeah, I mean, just those memories of just seeing achievements, it's seeing people recognized for their achievements, and yeah, you know, again, for me, it's never been about glory or anything. But um, I I did tell one of my coworkers in a, a different office that you know all I. I wanted to do something or wanted to do enough of something or make such an impression um, that, you know, I was going to my grandmother, you know, retirement dinner that, you know, you've been so impactful. We're going to have this retirement dinner for you. You've been so impactful with the church. You're going to retire. People are going to come out and say thanks. Like, I just wanted to have that kind of impact on something, on someone that, and I don't want the glory, but, you know, for the recognition, just to be like, you have done so much. That's, that's kind of always been the goal. So, yeah, add my grandmother into that list, too, because <laughs> yeah. it's like, this, yeah. You of just, course. <laughs> I, I've just been, I service has been drilled into me and they probably didn't even know it but that's what I have seen throughout my my life is people serving well when you speak of service to others let's go into this next term which I call the greatest oxymoron of all times and that's work life balance (laughs) but how do you go about like balancing your personal commitments with your professional commitments? Because um, I would imagine that's maybe a real challenge for I you. I don't. It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's also something that we've heard from every woman of distinction, right, that we've talked to so far. Yes. And I, I've been told it's not, and I'm going to get it wrong, it's not even a balance anymore. It's just you know, things are going to take precedence at different points in time. Um, so you just kind of do your best. And one of my 
neighbors who, el- I say elderly in the truest sense. She was like 90. So I don't want anyone get upset with me about the age, but she, 90 plus years old. And she was talking something that she was sharing. I was like, oh, oh, I was talking about my yard. That's what it was. Like, oh, I haven't gotten to my yard yet. I'm so sorry. She's like, darling, you know, you can't do everything. She's like, you know, it's it's not about balance. It's about you can have everything, but you might not be able to have it all at the same time. Or you just, everything is a give and take. Um, there was a council member who served with me. She had been on council before and was a veteran, veteran in, in serving on council. And she always said her, her family comes first. She's like, council, secondary, it's great. I love it. But your family, your personal life is your personal life and your family comes first. And you're not always going to be able to do everything. And this notion that we're supposed to is we need to start throwing that out the window. Um, But yeah, what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to have more fun. <laughs> like we're, that, that is a topic that we, we, we talk about in my sessions. Like what, what is fun for me? Um, and the things like the exercise and all this other stuff we're supposed to do, how do you even make that fun? Um, so I think that's what it is. It's just knowing there are things we have to do, but being able to say no to different stuff, whatever that stuff is, and prioritize and those priorita- priorities are just going to look different, you know, than they were yesterday or, you know, one month they'll look like this or, you know, next quarter it'll be this way. So that's kind of how I'm approaching it right now. <laughs> that's fair. Yes. As they say, that's facts. <laughs> so um, the Women of Distinction program is all about supporting and uplifting and elevating women. So in what ways do you give back to your community or how do you support other women in their pursuits? Well, I think one way, so going back to balance and how to, I guess, maybe be more intentional and not spread yourself too thin. And this is something I'm still working on because, you know, I could commit myself to this organization or that organization like I literally just a couple of nights ago wrote down all the organizations I I am or should be members of and are a member of and that list is too long like we're all we're all over committed so it's like really how can I prioritize like you said what my what my purpose is like how how can I put that into organize it in the best way I don't know if that, well, if that makes sense. The, but um, Well, I was just yeah. going to say, I mean, th- this is a rough one because every moment of your day is spent on service. What, how, in what other ways do you get back? Well, I mean, my entire life is a life of service. I'm constantly pouring in. And really this question is getting towards, well, how do you support other women? Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I feel like I've always been able to do going back to Emerge Kentucky because that is an organization I will you know advertise until the cows come home because it was so integral in me feeling like I could run for office so when they asked me to come speak or serve on a panel I'm happy to do that because when it's a controlled um, you know a set time that I, I know what they want I'm confident in what I can share and you know a lot of times they just need someone to who's been through it to give that so I know that that is a a clear space for me to be um so I will dedicate time to that um for that purpose because I know I have a clear thing to say in that space you know in other organizations that they invite me to speak I will try and do that and you know right now um talking to different school organizations mm-hmm. utilizing my time that way I've been into a couple of schools this year and you know that's always kind of fun you know you talk yeah. to kids teenagers it gets a little tricky but <laughs> but you know kind of being that the older version of them you know trying to relate to them and say hey I remember when I was in middle school and wasn't thinking about anything and just giving them an idea of you could be me in 30 years 
So, you know, I'm not focused on any one organization, you know, I because again, I truly believe you've got to have your own personal time. But I'm right now for this moment, I feel it's more in my speaking engagements that I'm giving back to people. You know, our office obviously had we have an internship program, you know, and I'm trying to be out in the community more this year. Now that we've got the the foundation set for the office, I I want to be out in the in the community more speaking to different groups and letting them know that when this is what the office does, but yes, you too can do this. So it's a probably a little more structured, but again, that goes to the balance of, you know, work life. Cause I really need my weekends. To- <laughs> I, I'm a total introvert. I have the test scores to prove it. So I, I need to balance out. I need my quiet time. So for me, honestly, right now, that's kind of how I'm structuring how I mentor. But I'm always happy to talk to someone. You know, there are different organizations like the University of Kentucky, the law school, you know, invites me to speak. We've got the Black Law Students Organization. Always happy to speak with them. And because, again, they're they're like right on the, the cusp of coming into into the legal world. So I'm always happy to to talk to them. But again, they're students and it's a little well, trickier for them. I remember being that student. But no, for me, I'm always happy to just talk to people about, you know, I can, you know, grab a coffee with somebody, you know, if my schedule allows. You know, I, again, I have to <laughs> structure those out. But yeah, I think right now for me in this this time, a lot of it is through my speaking engagements and things like this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'm always out and about. People are like, do you stay at home? Like, yeah, I do. <laughs> but um <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. You know, of course, right now it looks like speaking engagements are how I'm mentoring different women and then bringing in people into my office because we have, hey, we're hiring, building and mentoring my own employees. That's another way that um, I've really been focused on just this last month of we're, we're here, we're in it together. We we all need, like, this is something I wish I had had when I was working in different offices. Like, we all need to learn how to be better individuals and learn other how to get along with with people just in different ways like knowing that oh this is how you communicate we're all still growing and when we can understand each other better then we have a better working environment so some of it's truly is through the teamwork team building workshops that I've brought into the office as well I'm seeing that as a way of mentoring people it's exactly what we need we need to be recharged ourselves as women of distinction so uh, it's so powerful. I mean, just and and complex. So it's, yes. it's 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 not an easy answer to how you get to this this place and the space. Yeah. So nuggets for me are making sure that you recharge, that you balance, that you prioritize, that in support of other women, that you make yourself available, that you have those one on ones, those coffee conversations are powerful and that you also recognize that in the workplace that whatever you 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 can do to inspire other women that you make yourself available for that as well. I I hear all kinds of what Dr. Stephen Covey used to call sharpening the saw, right? Mm-hmm. And making sure that there's balance. And he always used to use the example of, have you ever been too busy that you can't get gas for your car? And mm-hmm. just because you're too busy doesn't mean that your car will keep running. You know, you mentioned COVID. I think COVID made that challenge a lot more difficult. And I thought from the get-go, we thought we were going to be a lot more like work-life balanced during that time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then to find out it's just like everybody's like, I mean, I remember getting in front of a computer at eight and then it being five o'clock and I'm not even realizing that I hadn't even gotten up one time. Mm -hmm. So the charge is on us really to balance that. Right. Right. And the ability to say no and no one to shut it off. Right. Right. (laughs) But, yeah, I just think in many ways that's been a lot more challenging for women, you know, going Mm -hmm. through that time as well and then emerging out of that. Right. And I'll I'll add to that that for me, I never thought I was a people pleaser. And I'm pretty sure no one in my family would say, oh, yeah, she's a people pleaser. But, you know, that just the inclination to say yes to stuff. Because when you feel appreciated that someone asked and then you you want them to like you and then and then you want to do a good job and all that. But, you know, there are some things we just have to we have to say no to. And it's OK to say no. And it's OK to say not right now. You know, all of those things. And you know, going to. The, the COVID, oh, yeah, there was, because I was in Princeton at that point, and 
I had been in my apartment for three days. Did not realize it had been three days since I left my apartment. <laughs> and just realized, like, why am I so grumpy and just cranky? And I don't know if it was my life coach or just a friend I was talking to. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I haven't left this 700 square footage in three days. Yeah, that's a problem. So it really is reclaiming your time, taking your time back, all of that. Um, because it really is, if I'm in a better space, and, and this is, you know, coaching language how do I want to show up to an event Mm -hmm. you know do I want to be you know the the me that I think I am right now you know that I'm energized I'm ready to go ready to talk to you all or you know if I've gone to you know three other events before that I'm going to show up in a very different way and I'm going to try to show up as the Angela that you know I want to be but and for me personally and knowing how I am and the time that I need to recharge, I will most definitely show up as a different Angela. So that that is something else that I've learned in the last couple of years. That it's like, okay, let's let's structure some of this, and it's and it's okay because it's, it's okay to say no because you always want to come as your best self, and sometimes that has to be you have to create some space for that and some time to recharge and do all of that. So I have come up with a list of 20 ways to say no eloquently. <laughs> so I'll pass that on. And also overcommitting is also perceived as, you know, a withdrawal from an emotional bank account. You know, if mm-hmm. we if we don't say no to certain things, we're overcommitting. And then that has negative consequences on the right. back end. Right. Exactly. So we've talked a lot about I think it's been like gold mining for advice and <laughs> Dr. Alamine has said we've picked up a lot of different nuggets and we've discovered some real gold here. But how do you envision using the platform that you have right now or influence to create positive change for women and even girls in the future? Good and tough question, too. I could say in general, simply just doing the best that I can in, in the role that I'm that I'm in and knowing that, you know, creating a plan, knowing what I want from the office, the first thing being, you know, like I said, the annual report and being able to bring it to fruition and show that it can be done. One, politicians keep their word. You know, that that's something that was very important to me and something one of my colleagues, you know, said jokingly, but it was like, yeah, no, that is the point to show that politicians can keep their word. But continue to keep my word and and continue to put my plan to, into action. It, it's been uh, an interesting first year. So we're still setting the plan in motion, creating the plan, and just doing the best that I can in it. And when there are things that come up, being the best county attorney and providing the best services that that I can, that the office can for for the county. I think that's part of being a role model is just because, and I always tell people and set it on the campaign trail, you don't know anyone in Fayette County or outside can find themselves coming into my office, whether it's a speeding ticket, someone they know got in trouble or they need guardianship for someone, they're behind in their property taxes, but doing my best to make sure that their experience is as good as it can be, even when you perhaps are on the wrong side. But knowing that if you are the defendant, that I've hired people, I have a staff that are going to seek justice and who are going to be fair and who understand life's trickiness and and all of the things that can get people into those situations. And that we're looking for justice and balancing out all of the factors. And then knowing that, you know, we're doing collecting child support to help families. It's not just to get after someone. It's a long, long answer to talk about, you know, being a role model. But I, I think that's that's just going to be my, my purpose, my goal. And hopefully I, I do a good job at it so people can see that. And just doing the best that I can, you know, because... Again, I think history is going to, you know, your presidents always talk about, well, history will determine how how good of a president I was. You know, that's, I can do some things, I can do some projects, but, you know, I think just me doing my best to not just elevate the office, elevate my employees, and again, bring back some of that transparency and let people know that government is here to serve 
and to serve to, to the best of our ability is really kind of the, the best I can do and just know have people know that I'm trying to work on it every day to do that and relay that to them in a way that they can can see it and at least understand that, well, she's trying. We're not going to succeed every day. Every day we're trying to get better and do better. I just feel so blessed and honored just to sit back and listen and to reflect on my own life and my own leadership. And um, there's, there's no singular ingredient list for a woman of distinction, is there? No. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, just just listening to what you're saying about the office of the attorneys and its um, integrity is, what, is what's yeah. coming to mind. Mm -hmm. It's just bringing back integrity to that office and to that space. And then eventually, you know, everything that you do in public service is truly about the community and, and, and providing a legacy. And what I'm really getting out of everything that has been shared today is that, Angela, you are not just a, a, a legacy you're not living a legacy in perpetuity you're living a legacy every single day you're creating that legacy every single day and so again we thank you we honor you we look forward to working with you uh, at Project Ricochet and at WUKY for the future and in many endeavors in years to come well we've come to the close of a, another amazing podcast. I'd like to thank our listeners. I'd like to thank our guest. And as we say here at WKY, we can't do it without our community. And just keep in mind that DEIB is the DNA of humanity. It's the ricochet effect, ricochet effect. It's the ricochet effect, ricochet effect.